Okay, we're here with Ib Pedersen at, in Beijing, China at the International GMO Conference, which just happened this weekend. Ib, can you tell us what you talked about at the conference, please? Well, I talked about uh, my experiences in my pig herd. Uh, I have a farm of 110 hectares and 450 model sows, and weaning them up to 30 kilo. And uh, we have um, experienced uh, change over from GMO soil to non-GM soil, and we've seen some remarkable health uh, benefits from doing it. Can you describe some of those? Yes, as um, two days after we changed, we had, we, we had for a very long time a severe diarrhea straight after birth amongst the pigs and the pig mortality rates. And when we changed day two, that disappeared completely. Within two days, they stopped yeah. having diarrhea. Yeah. Now, what kind of health issues can come from having severe diarrhea? As a, it's, a, it's a type of diarrhea that is uh, started by Clostridia. By Clostridia? Yeah, it's a type of bacteria. It's actually a type of bacteria that is more resistant to glyphosate than other bacteria. My so son I, had Clostridia. It's happening in right. humans as well. Well, that could well be the case. And, and so if you have a higher level of glyphosate due to the soya, for instance, then, then uh, they will take out your lactic acid bacteria, all your good ones, and you're left with the baddies. Uh. It, I also, same time, I've also uh, experienced the same story with Clostridia bacteria. It makes bloat. And uh, we used to have size dows die occasionally after that. That stopped. They can die of bloat in the stomach? Yes. Like inflammation? Is that what no, that is? No, it, it goes in the blood and uh, if, it, if it ruptures from the stomach to the blood, it goes in the blood and you get it uh, inside your blood and you die very rapidly. Wow, so how many pigs do you have at this farm? In total? Yeah. Oh, there'll be uh, near on 3,000. Near 3,000 pigs, and this is in Denmark? It's, uh, that is with uh, yeah. all the uh, small ones. No, no, it's more than 3,000, 3,500. 3,500, wow. Yeah. So you, how long have you been doing this? As of the change so happened uh, in April 2011, mm -hmm. our medicine use went down to a third. We saw uh, that was straight from the day. And we never changed the practice, we just didn't have any sick pigs. So I want to point this out. So you changed over to non-GMO soy feed, yeah. and right away you didn't have to spend one third of the amount yeah. of money on, on, on medicine for your yeah. pigs. And that is uh, good news because uh, savings on medicine yes. pays for the extra price for non-GM soy. Isn't that wonderful? So it is cost effective for you. Oh yeah, no, it's very cost effective because uh, then I get all the uh, extras from the, the better productivity. And we had uh, almost two pigs uh, more weaned per sow after because they didn't die. Wow, so you've, it has been more profitable for you to use non-GMO soy. Oh yes, it's been like uh, US dollars. It would be a hundred dollar per sow. More profitable. Yes. Wow, well then why aren't more pig farmers doing this? Well, you ask me. Oh, oh my God, I die, yeah. I am. <laughs> but it's, oh my uh, goodness. But the funniest thing is about that, I have actually asked uh, a lot. I'm sort of known to be an activist. You can hit my name <laughs> up on the internet, you'll see it. And uh, <clears throat> only because I think it's not fair that uh, Danish authorities hasn't taken my experiences serious. And then I, I take, uh, I, well they are. They're trying to defend their ideas, <coughs> so they do see me as a threat, if nothing else. The Danish pig producers, chairman, is actually very interested in what I'm, what I'm doing. Okay. And uh, I know that his uh, herdsman has been uh, buying a farm on his own. Yeah. And he's actually uh, had the same diarrhea problems, and uh, I know that I know that that herdsman has gone non GM. I've not been in contact with him, so I don't know what his results are. Okay, and so some people are taking notice. And there's, uh, there's two other farmers that I am involved in that has been uh, changing over, and they've both seen the same very large benefits. Excellent. One of them, the latest one, has had uh, 1,100 sows, and uh, he changed because he saw me on television, and uh, he uh, didn't tell his herdsman. And the herdsman was super proud when the terrier came, he showed him around and yeah, he had uh, almost, I think 1.6 pigs more at the udders of the south. And so they could milk, and we have had experience 1.8 more, but he has experienced 1.6 more at the udder. 
Okay, so that's that's a lot because 1.6 more piglets. Yeah, times 2.3 in a year. Times but, two, yeah. but that just means to say that it's not necessarily that they die. If they're not there, they're at a, a spare mother as a breastfeeding mother, another yeah. one. Yes. And uh, and um, but that takes up space and it's not so efficient. It's better if the, the real mother will do it. Yeah. And uh, and everything looked super good. And he told us, I'm not use medicine for the there's no being di no diarrhea, and uh, we have had this. Uh, uh, the mothers will lay on there. You can tell her if the mother sow is happy. When she fed the pigs, she will lay on the, she lay on the side to yeah. feed the pigs. Uh -huh. Well, she just stay on the side because if she's not happy and the pigs are hungry, then it then they will start fighting, and they have got very sharp teeth. Oh. So if they are fighting, they can't miss biting her teeth. Oh. And, uh, and then she will have to lay on her stomach when she is not feeding them. And she will only feed them very shortly and not very often. Right, because they're biting her. So, yes. yes. And then oh. very quickly you get some pigs you have to take away or they'll die. Oh, okay. And, uh, and um, but, uh, like what we noticed was a total change in behavior when we stopped feeding GM soy. They all were sleeping. The pigs were slain. They were nose to the other, and and uh, and they all all happy. They're all happy. And fed. Well, we moms would like our kids to be fed and happy too. <laughs> and we we yeah. thank you for your contribution to this conference. I've had, there's two issues on the yeah. conference. Yeah. Yeah. That is a, a good issue of changing to non-GM. Yes. That we see a lot of it. other farmers would do it. And. The other thing that we have seen is a more dramatic one. Um, I'm, I made a study; it just come out. On uh, <coughs> well, part of it's come out. Mm -hmm. uh, Monica Kruger in Germany has done my glyphosate tests on uh, the feed, the different food ingredients, and my milk keeps lock on the on the food. And in that way, I've been able to uh, make an, a, a clear. Uh, Excel arc on where and what day there has been how much in the food. And then I can go back as I had the pigs born and I've seen the number of deformities and uh, the types of deformities. And with a scientist in Norway, we've gone back and analyzed and found out uh, how many, uh, what happens. And if you look 35 days pushed in the view. Uh, as from the, the day you know they have it in the trough, and, and then uh, see what as then take those that. When you when you when later. you chart the amount of glyphosate compared yeah. to the number of days, what do you find? Well, what we find is that it's uh, not necessarily the first months, but it could be, but it's about there and until. Ah, it's very difficult to say the exact days, but it's uh, it's it's not necessarily the very first day. It could be, but the the peak seems to be uh, somewhat uh, first, second trimester, and uh, it's and it's severe for malformations. It's uh, okay. So you're seeing of the brain missing, uh, severe malformations from the mother pigs eating glyphosate while they're pregnant. We have been uh, together with Thomas Spoon, We have made uh, the graphs, and uh, we have we found out that if you feed 0.2 grams per ton or parts per million mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> in the food of glyphosate, as a parts, parts per million of glyphosate. And uh, then we have um, we have got more than if you feed 0.1 parts per million. Right. Uh, that's uh, over a very long time. That is clear. It already starts at 0.1 parts per million. Right. And uh, at one part per million, we're five times higher than 0.2. So you see a significant change yes. in just a small amount, and then when you you mentioned when you go up to 2.2 parts per million, it's a lot of malformations. Yeah, it is only one month, so it's not. But if you add that with the one month we had at uh, one, or just over one part per million, then uh, and they were just after each other, and uh, then it's a very uh, clear picture. Over one, it's it's one to two uh, mm -hmm. parts per million. We have uh, five times more. 
than 0.2 parts per million. Okay, so from, from 0.2 up to 2.25, you had five times more okay. miscarriages and birth defects. Yes. Yeah. And you no. mentioned before that those sows that had five times more birth defects had lower levels of glyphosate in their urine than the mothers that had breast milk, glyphosate oh, yes. in their and breast no, milk. And not, and not only that, so funny thing, it's uh, five times more uh, defects, but it's also five times the number of abortions. You mean miscarriages, as yes. far as mother's terms? Okay, yes. miscarriages. Yes. So they had five and, times and number... And it is, uh, and in the pigs, it's uh, 0.95 pigs less born per litter. It's and smaller litters. Out. So it's astounding. I mean, this is... Moms really need to understand this, that the yeah. amount of glyphosate found in the mother's breast milk was less than what you oh, found. Much, much less. Much less. My sow's uh, urine, <clears throat> yeah. if you have urine samples, when they were at the peak, they mm -hmm. had uh, 44. That one sow had 44 nanograms per milliliter. Which is parts per billion. 44 parts per billion, right? Yes, per, per parts per billion. And, and our mothers <clears throat> in their breast milk had 166 parts per billion. Yeah, one of your mothers had. Yeah. And I would, I would be um, very worried for not only her offspring, but also for her own health. Yes. And uh, if I follow the line up, my sows on that, we would be very close on 30% deformities and 30% abortions. Well, that's where we're at in America right now. We have a 30% failure to conceive rate. Yeah. One Maybe out of three. Maybe not 30% uh, deformities, but abortions, yes. Yeah, miscarriages. Right. Yeah, we have a 30% failure to conceive rate, meaning meaning one out of three one out of three of uh, conceptions are lost in America today. It's the highest in recorded history. So you're seeing a direct correlation between yeah. glyphosate, not only um, clostridia and illness and diarrhea, but to birth defects and miscarriages. Yes. Thank you so much for your contribution and sharing this information. I know it's not easy. I know a lot we of have, people don't believe it, but, but um, have, uh, you, you have facts. Yeah. We have, and uh, now I can say I'm not the only one. In Denmark, You're not the only one, yes. No, in Denmark, we are three farmers. I have uh, a salt farm. Yes. It's, uh, it's uh, two farmers more has gone over that has uh, pleaded uh, that they had good results. I'm not known the results to take, but uh, but he's changing. My veterinarian has three of the farms in his regime, yeah. and um, and he says it's starting to move now. Yeah. Well, hopefully you won't be the only ones for long. We hope thousands of people will see this video and the, the your talk yeah. from the conference. Uh, considering how much Americans love bacon, we would like to have those animals that we're eating be healthy. That would be a good thing. Yes. So thank you for your contribution to the to the world and to bacon lovers everywhere. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.